For the first time ever, a satellite from the GEM state will orbit the Earth. Six on your side's Michelle Edmonds shows us what it will be testing in this in depth report. Idaho will soon lay claim to part of the cosmos. It's all thanks to some of the brightest minds at a couple of Treasure Valley schools. And Chris, can you tell us a little bit about the radiation science? You are looking at history in the making. How are you going to see if the packets look for real? This is Idaho's first satellite, created by two professors and four undergrads from Northwest Nazarene University. It's exciting. It's exciting to do something first. It's called a CubeSat, and it's been given the go for launch from NASA. Three, two, one, zero. If all goes as planned, Idaho's first satellite will send back data unlike anything ever tested in outer space. So this will all be new, new information for the scientific community. This all began two and a half years ago when Dr. Stephen Park and his engineering students watched this. We start by building giant rockets that have. It's to a TED Talk lecture on 3D printing in zero gravity from a Silicon Valley business called Made in Space. The ideas so excited the Nampa team, they cold called the company. We called them up and said, hey, uh, we'd like to work with you. We think what you're doing is really cool. And they said, sure. That summer, Braden Grimm and Mitch Kamstra interned for Made in Space, and their dream of creating their own CubeSat became a reality. It was funny because we would say, oh, we're from Inanu, and they'd say, Inanu, you know, <laughs> from Idaho? They, most people didn't even know where Idaho was. And so that was pretty interesting being able to tell them, well, yeah, I mean, we're putting a satellite in space. The NNU team named their project MakerSat-1. Its purpose is to give astronauts on the International Space Station the ability to create more satellites simply by 3D printing the designs emailed to them from Earth. So they'll basically take the 3D printed parts and just snap them all together, plug in the connectors, and shoot it out into space from there. Building these spacecraft in orbit will save money by not having to blast heavy materials off Earth. One problem though, what kind of plastics endure the rigors of space? The NNU team took a step back and decided to create a satellite to test four polymer samples. I think it's cool how you can just basically build whatever is in your mind and kind of bring it to life. What you are looking at is the computer model for MakerSat Zero, a precursor satellite to the team's original idea. Braden presented their new plan this past summer at the SmallSat conference in Utah, and it caught NASA's attention. The space agency offered MakerSat Zero a spot on one of its next rocket launches. To accept, the NNU team would have to cram about a year's worth of work into just a few months. Saying, is this possible? Can we do it? And we all said, we'll make it possible. We're going to get it done. <laughs> the last three months, it means working <laughs> seven days a week up to 17 hour days. MakerSat Zero will blast off from Vandenberg Air Force Base this March on a Delta II rocket carrying a next generation weather satellite. CubeSat missions always uh, are piggyback flights with other satellites. Uh, it's a free way to get more hardware into space. NNU's Cube will sit next to four other projects chosen by NASA, including one from MIT and another developed by the Australian government. It's all impressive, yet there's another first to Idaho's first satellite. Uh, this is a TI NSP 430. The university challenged Caldwell High School's engineering class to come up with an experiment to ride along on the solar powered cube. I never thought before that I'd be sending a satellite to space detecting anything. Led by 16 year old Chris Lyle, seven Caldwell students developed a way to measure radiation in deep space. How many hours have you put on? I, a lot. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, it's been pretty intense, but that was. You know, part of the deal, we knew signing up that this was going to be pretty, pretty crazy schedule. But well worth it. The teenagers say they're only the second high school in the country to have an experiment on a CubeSat. That's one of the big problems in education right now. School isn't viewed as being relevant. You know what? Launching a satellite is pretty relevant. 
MakerSat Zero will orbit the North and South Poles 14 times a day for close to the next decade. That's a total miles traveled of 1.3 billion. To put that in perspective, it's equal to seven round trips from the Earth to the Sun. And then once each orbit, Idaho's first satellite will turn on and conduct the science experiments. That data will be sent back to Earth via communication satellites and uploaded straight to the Internet. So we can sit in our lab or at home with our smartphone and we can look at exactly where our satellite is at any given time and the data coming from our satellite right on our smartphone. If it all seems a bit out of this world, the MakerSat students agree. But for their professor, this revolutionary space project has already made its biggest impact right here on Earth. It's already a success because it's instilled the kind of uh, character and uh, intelligence, work ethic, uh, experience, uh, all those things that we set out to do. To have a successful launch and to have it work in orbit is just icing on the cake. Tonight, the NNU team and their satellite are on their way to California. MakerSat Zero must undergo one more inspection. It's NASA's shock test, a high G force simulation of the rocket launch. Only half of the CubeSats tested make it through. I'll be sure to let you know what happens. Michelle Edmonds, six on your side. Now, the MakerSat project cost around $400,000 that came from grants and a dollar match by NNU. The group is still looking for donations.